JD, Laura, Tolfra, Jasper, I mean, like, it just, Ryan, it just, it goes on and on. And Laura in this film, I mean, speaking truth to uh, the, the black woman's, you know, perspective in this film as well. I mean, like, it just, there's some really striking scenes in this film. There's, there's humor, there's heart. You know, we all, Spike wanted us all to see it at can, And we laughed, we cried. I mean, we really cried. <laughs> It was embarrassing how I like it, but but it was um it was all worth it, you know, because we we all put our hearts and souls into this film, and uh, I'm just ready to kind of like w once you're done with it, you just got to give it away and let people take what they can from it. So, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of distraction going on politically, and I think um what 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 Spike is really good at is reminding people to. Uh, reminding people what, what 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 we should be focusing on you know what I mean because it's very easy to you know get distracted um, especially with this current administration and I, I I applaud him for stepping up and saying but wait you know this this is what's important as well and he doesn't try to you know make you think a certain way he just puts it out there and, and, and lets you have an opinion so he, and, and, and that's that's the kind, that's the kind of creator you want to work with so, I play Odetta, who is the best friend to Patrice Dumas in the movie, and if you saw the movie, you can see she's a little sassy. She doesn't really know she likes Ron uh, too much as that, one, that, you know, that quintessential best friend who I see you, my strong friend, but I got to keep an eye out on you. Well, I, I play a character, Felix, who's, uh, who's a very um, dark-minded member of the, uh, of the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, I'm, I'm from Finland. I'm, we don't have Ku Klux Klan, but we do have racism, just like any other country in the world. Less racism than, than, than there is here in the, uh, the United States, but we still have it. And the way I wanted to play the character, what I, the, my only goal as an actor was to try and play a real person, a real life human being, not a character, caricature. Um, I was hoping that there's something scary in the character so that hopefully it would be one of the most anti-racist things in the movie, uh, in, this, in this film. Yeah. Exactly, so that people actually see that these people, these idiots exist and they're next door neighbors and, and they're everywhere and, uh, and then hopefully would, you know, make people think at least a little bit of a uh, of the state of affairs in, in America and when it comes to racial issues this is the most terrible out of all the uh, all the all of civilized world uh, what's crazy about it is it really happened and the uh, people that he that came that he was came across and the relationships he developed and built with are insane you got to see it to watch. you got to see it to find out what did he show you the card oh he, he has the, the Ku Klux Klan membership card he keeps it on him yeah, he brought it this morning when I saw him. Signed by David too. I know. I'm like, it's crazy. I think any other director, Jordan Peele, Spike Lee, any other people than them could have told this story. I mean, this is such a specific story. And tonally, you know, you got to be very careful. I mean, this isn't a comedy, if you ask me. So uh, only they could pull this off. Well, if we inspire one person to make some change, if we inspire one person off of this film to start a dialogue and set aside their old ways of thinking after seeing this film and seeing and listening how hateful these words are and what it sounds like, the sort of lexicon of hate and how generationally it is, then we've done our job. Um, well, I play Patrice, who's the president of the Black Student Union, and she's very involved in the black power movement um, of the early 70s, and is really a strong woman who speaks out against racism and oppression and really makes her voice heard to try and create change in her community. You know, I just wanted to bring to life a person who felt fully rounded and multidimensional, and, um, you know, obviously I wanted to portray a strong black woman, but I also wanted to make her feel real and true to life and vulnerable and um, 
authentic in her relationship with Ron. So, yeah. I mean, the dream is forever to be in a Spike Lee joint. For me, that's what made me want to be in movies were his films. So this is honestly just a dream come true. You know, it's um, you know, this is a period piece, but we are speaking on subjects that are completely relevant for right now, and all of our themes and all the issues that we touch on are actually related to our current time. So I think it's, it's really a timely film. The story is about uh, the Ku Klux Klan trying to recruit people in 1978 Colorado Springs via a newspaper ad, a one ad, uh, and I responded to it pretending to be one, uh, pretending to be a white supremacist, and uh, they invited me to a meeting, and I was forced, obviously, because of who I am and what I look like, I was forced to send a white officer posing as me and uh, we pulled this ruse off for uh, seven and a half months. Why is it so relevant? For us to be watching this movie. It's relevant because what happened in the 70s in Colorado Springs is still going on today. And I would venture to add that it's probably going on even worse today because we have somebody sitting in the White House who has given a wink and a nod and allowed these people to do what they're doing and say what they're saying. For me, as I get older, I want to tell stories that are about real people doing real things of significance. And Ron Stallworth, who wrote this book and who, who lived this, um, wasn't afraid to take on the KKK, wasn't afraid of the unknown, wasn't afraid to do something about it. And that kind of courage is amazing to me and something that we should all take note of and explore in a film like this, along with the conversation about uh, race, about policing, about everything that's in here. At first, I didn't really get comfortable with it until the end of the shoot because it's very uncomfortable to let yourself, uh, even for make-believe, even as an actor, go to these places of ugly hate, bigotry, hating someone, not knowing them just based on the color of their skin and try to figure out why someone would believe these things um, and, and the language that we have to use and things. And, but of course, Spike is an incredible director and so supportive and inclusive and collaborative and really pushes everybody to go there because at the end of the day, you're playing this ugly character to tell a story that is about overcoming that kind of ignorance. And so you, you do it, you do your job as part of that ensemble uh, to fulfill you know, Spike's vision. Because it's a true story, because it really happened, and because sometimes we like to believe this myth that racism or homophobia or misogyny is dead. And as we've seen, unfortunately, in recent events, it, it of course isn't. And so I think to be reminded that we can't let our guard down, not to be, not to push others away, but to bring people in, that we still need to fight this fight, that we still need to show people love rather than hate, is a story worth telling. Jordan Peele called me up on the phone and, and pitched it to me. Black man in, infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan. What's not to like, right? <laughs> well, it was very, it's pure Hollywood, high concept, you know, all love the Jordan, you know, I love, I saw Get Out four or five times, and, uh, you know, that, that call, I didn't even know he was going to call me, so, uh, you know, it, it was a blessing. What I've been saying since 1988, school days, wake up. It's very different the way people think about me before they see this film than right afterwards, yeah. Uh, it was intimidating, it was really daunting, you don't want to let anyone down. I grew up loving Spike's movies, so to then to be cast in one and be such a public figure, to be playing such a public figure, it was really hard. It just meant a lot, a lot of research, um, a lot of depressing research, yeah. That's why you got to do it for someone like Spike Lee, because you know he's taking care of you, you know he's a genius, and he would say to me when I get depressed, uh, you know, don't worry, I got you, you're, you're serving my message. And he's right, when I saw the film, I went, oh, I'm so glad I did it. Um, they say if you don't study your history, you're, you're condemned to repeat it. And uh, that might be happening right now, so it's a very, very important time for this film to come out.